you. Today we're going to review Villains Month Week 2. Two. This week we have a lot of, a lot of really cool uh, <laughs> things coming up. Of course, uh, we still have the lenticular covers, the 3D covers that are that are out and about. So we're going to, I guess we could go through and let you know the, the ones that we ended up getting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Look at our blog. We did post all of them so you guys can check and see what's out there. Uh, we only got some of them. Because yes. <laughs> we don't want our wallets to cry. <laughs> we got our Lobo, Riddler, Harley Quinn, Solomon Grundy, Killer Frost, Cord it Out, Black Manta, Inch Trigon. <laughs> the only issue, it will run out fast. Um, this week, the thing that ran out fast was um, was actually a Batman character. Um, and a concrete one too, is Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze mm -hmm. ran out um, <laughs> within the first couple of hours. Oh. What about this guy? That was weird. Let's talk Trigon. about Trigon. Yes. All right, we're going to talk about Trigon. Now... Basically, with Trigon, it told about his origins. What did you guys think about? It? Would you would you say this is a good one to get? Um, yes. Well, yes, yes. Okay. It was, it was interesting. Um, some of it was a little weird. At one point, it was just like get all the women on every every planet pregnant, so we can have an army of many Trigons and. <laughs> but the, so you end up finding out that um, Raven is his daughter, um, and you see his mom for like two her mom for like two pages. Mm -hmm. um, Didn't we already know that Raven was his daughter? Yes, yes. Okay. But it was it was kind of cool to like it. see how that came about and like the reasons for that. She's she's essentially the only child of Trigon that survived. Oh, because her mom's human. Because her mom's it's human. Like Doctor Who. Humans are awesome. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Strange, but it was cool. I mean, they basically, he was trying to conceive a kid, and what essentially happened is that they were capturing all these women and trying to impregnate them. And then a, a woman from Earth came, and I mean, I guess people have heard about Trigon here. <laughs> because, I've never had one of those. I've never had one of these before, unless she was an ice cream flavor. Yeah. <laughs> Able to have Raven, um, which was her backstory. It just makes sense. He's this huge, evil... I don't know. He's not a god. He's just, I guess, the epitome of evil, and he wants to take over everything. So it makes sense that he wants to just start his own little baby army. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that says a good thing about humans or a bad thing about humans. That she was the smart too. one to say, hey, I can actually do this, but I'm going to turn my kid and have them kill you. Yeah. It was interesting. <laughs> I don't know. I would definitely get it. Yeah, I would get it. It's, it's a cool read. The beginning, he doesn't even look like how Trigon is mm -hmm. normally looks. It's He's, cool to see the transformation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was kind of creepy that they that these people were trying to eradicate evil instead of solving it. They literally would take people, bring it to this giant creepy heart thing, mm -hmm. suck out their souls, and store them there. <laughs> it's creepy. It's like this evil soul bank. Yeah. And then Trigon <laughs> cashed in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At Comic Con last year, um, guys had asked me like, "What do you think about this?" Because they're always curious of what girl readers think about certain things. Mm -hmm. What did you think about the Trigon and just the woman collecting? <laughs> We're not baby factories, guys. <laughs> <laughs> like that didn't really bother me, just because that was his ultimate plan. Like he's a warlord, so that's what he was gonna do. He yeah. Would kill the men and take the women for himself. Like, like um. Genghis Khan. Yep, yeah. yeah, Genghis Khan. It's true. I mean, I don't want to say, like, I have a little bit of disregard for aliens, but the, most of them are aliens. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, that's another thing. How does that say against humans? Because all yeah. the alien women would, like, go kill themselves before they could give birth to this kid. Right. Um, I wasn't extremely bothered by it. I mean, he's a villain. I mean, if it was a hero doing that, OMG. Yeah, yeah that would be kind of... Ew. Yeah, it would just, explode. That would just automatically make him a bad guy. Mm -hmm. He's a villain. Yeah. So. And if a hero did that, he would just basically be a man whore. So I guess it would just be written <laughs> off as, oh, that's just his personality. No big deal. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm thinking of one person in general. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he would collect women, though. <laughs> he just kind of sleeps around. Talk about Dick Grayson, right? Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> as, we all liked Black Manta. Adore it. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. And this one actually touches on the fact that what happens when a villain whose only purpose in life is to go after one person, what does he do when that person's gone? And they actually touched on that on two of them in, the, in um, this week because Killer Frost kind of does the same mm -hmm. thing where Black Manta's only thing is to go kill Aquaman. So 
once he finds out that Aquaman's dead, what happens? You think that the cover looks like ketchup? Yeah, it kind of looks like ketchup. That's so much blood. Because like, who is he killing? Is he killing us? Because I, yeah, because Aquaman's Aquaman dead in the background. So essentially, what happens at the end of this is he's like he's so angry because Aquaman's dead. Uh, dead. So he goes to his dad's grave and he's like, "Dad, it's all done." And then, um, which is in Gloucester. Mm-hmm. When he's in Gloucester, like this crime syndicate completely messes up his dad's grave, mm-hmm. which freaks him out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I almost want to say like he. It seemed not from any words that were in there, but from the visual that you're getting, it seemed like he realized the crime syndicate is a bunch of bad guys. Like, I don't think he considered himself a bad guy. I think he considered himself someone that was out seeking revenge. Yeah. Um, and he just didn't care who stand, stood in his way. Um, however, with at the end of this, he's almost like, all the heroes are dead. Like, I think he just wanted Aquaman dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's like, all the heroes are dead. There's nobody to stand up to. Like, the new... Earth 2 or whatever Superman is up there they just throws up the movies like I don't like the sun and then like he looks like, back and he's like <laughs> oh you the tides right I didn't think about that oh, yeah. wow. and they make a comment about like oh you just let you look like Superman but you just have a stupid you on your chest yeah, after like you know Gloucester was flooded Matt Randall was like screw these guys <laughs> I'm gonna go save the day yeah so he has a new purpose his purpose is always killing people yeah so do each his own I suppose and then the complete opposite of that is Killer Frost where her whole thing was once she was near um, Firestorm, whenever she was near him, like her powers would go away and she'd be more human. So she wasn't always cold. She wasn't always empty. And that was her whole purpose That's in what life. she wanted. Was to figure out how to go back to normal. Yeah. And once she found out he was dead, she basically just was like, well, now what? I'm going to die. A little depression at the end. Which so that was, was pretty sad. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That was sad. So you have two opposite sides of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Somebody who's like, I'm going to go kill everybody, and then her just kind of completely giving up. Um, and then we have the Riddler, who's like, I mean, everybody's saying that Batman's dead, but I really don't believe it, so I'm just going to sit here and finish my game of cards, waiting for Batman to come back. No, no. Yeah, that's exactly what you did. <laughs> just like, <laughs> do suits. On top of Wayne Enterprises, just like, playing the solitaire game, no big deal. Yeah, he's like, I don't believe it, you know. <laughs> so Lobo is not the Lobo that we're used to. <laughs> He's the Earth whatever Lobo. I don't know. They assign numbers. I'm assuming it's Earth 2 because that's what keeps on coming up. Um, basically, it's a very much better looking Lobo <laughs> that's in here. Yeah. He's not like this crazy beast thing. Um, he's kind of like a classy dude with martini glass that goes in, um, has, it's basically an assassin. At the end of it, it was kind of heart-wrenching. I kind of felt bad for her. There was, like, all these little... They almost looked like something from a Jim Henson movie. They were kind of like the evil guys in The Dark Crystal, only good guys. Only they were, like, cute in an ugly way. And so uh, they wanted to transport... He's like, like, we'll give you information if you transport our cargo to another world... Or to another planet or something. Um, an international trade center kind of thing. And he agreed... He got ransacked by whoever, and then he's like, oh, you know, this ain't, this is not, I'm not being professional anymore, it just kind of kills them all. Because um, he, he kills professional, like, he just cuts off their head, if it's just, <laughs> if it's a professional job. And the, uh, the creatures, they wanted to boil them down and make some kind of elemental thing out of them. And he realizes that the cargo is people, and then he's just like, get back in there. And they're like, no, please. And you're like, oh my god. <laughs> and you're like, what? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> really bad for them and then he's just like yeah whatever and uh he's like the worst thing about this and you see them being like help and he's like is paperwork and you're like you're an ass i'm gonna go back to earth and completely kill this guy that pretends he's lobo too so he's gonna go do that he's much better looking he's kind of an ass you start liking him in the beginning they're like whoa Never. wait do you want to kill people yeah and i was kind of excited for this one not gonna lie and um it was just I don't know. Lackluster. Lackluster. Yeah. Uh, his original story is something along the lines that he was killed by the mob or something like that mm-hmm. and buried in like a peat area and then mm-hmm. came back um, and ended up becoming a mob boss at some point in some whatever issues. 
But I don't remember his story being like this. And this is supposed to be an Earth 2 Solomon Grundy. So do not expect your regular Solomon Grundy. If you don't like that Earth 2 stuff, which I'm not a huge fan of, don't get Solomon Grundy. If you want the lenticular cover of him, I mean, he doesn't even really look like Solomon Grundy very much. But, you know, it looks cool. it looks cool, so you can display it. The story is complete crap, though. I mean, it's interesting. It was kind of interesting. It, yeah. You know, it was also kind of sad. Yeah, it was. It's like they tried to jam pack as much drama into one section. Yeah, 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 kind of. I know. And then it was mostly the backstory. You kind of got into a little bit. Mm -hmm. But then the modern day, where he's just like he dive bombed the Earth and walks around, and just touches living things and kills them. Yeah. Oh, and then they explode him, but his exploded matter like touches people and kills them too. And then he conglomerates. He, yeah, he goes back into someone grumpy again. Yeah. I don't know. Just saying the rhyme the whole time. Yeah. yeah. But again, it's not the regular Solomon Grundy. They, they make the distinction that it's an Earth 2 Solomon Grundy, which I guess makes sense because he took over Earth 2. I guess. Mm -hmm. However, I, I probably should have read what was underneath the Solomon Grundy. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh if you like the Earth 2 stuff, it might be cool. If you like a different change of pace and backstory, it might be cool to look at. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't like it when backstories get changed, don't look at it. <laughs> and speaking of backstories getting changed, Oh god, yeah. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> want to get other people's opinions who do psychology or who, you know, that are planning on having that in the field, how they feel about it. Because <laughs> she's like, I'm brilliant and I got bored, so I decided I was going to go fix people. You don't fix people. They fix themselves. <coughs> it shows her, like, as a kid and, yeah, she's mm -hmm. like, I want to fix all of these people and, um, That's you a know, she's... That's a issue. Yeah. She starts working at <laughs> Arkham. And, I mean, it's it's like she gets bored with the people who are like, I'm creeped out by hands, or, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I don't know. And so then she's talking about the people at Arkham, and she's like, there's this barrier, like, between us, you know, the doctors and the patients. And so she breaks the barrier by kind of going almost incognito, but I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah. Okay. Unethical. Unethical. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like her new origin. I don't like, um, her new personality fits for the Suicide Squad. I get that. Um, for the Suicide Squad, I liked it. I liked, I liked her new outfit. I liked her, um, new persona, uh, because it fits Suicide Squad. And they made it clear in the beginning of Suicide Squad that Harley Quinn was acting like this in order to get the Joker's attention. <clears throat> the Joker's no longer around. So, I mean, they do make reference to that at the very end when mm -hmm. she's with Deadshot. Um, she does say, um, I guess something along the he says something along the lines to her, like, you know, you just made this elaborate blowing up plan with these Game Boys. And he doesn't care. And yeah, and he's like, you know, the Joker's not gonna, even if he's out there, he's not gonna come back to you by doing stuff like this. Um, so, I mean, that was interesting, but at the same time, it's like, when is her streak of attention grabbing going to cease? Mm -hmm. And I, I like the innocent Harley that was with the Gotham City Sirens. I like her. And I just hope that this is a phase and that she goes back to that. But at the same time, they've kind of made it clear that they want this as the new origin story. Mm -hmm. She got thrown into a vat like the Joker did, and therefore she's like the Joker. I think it's a lot more sinister, as well as a lot more interesting, if she did that a complete turn completely on her oh, own God. and mm -hmm. not with the assistance of a vat of chemicals. Yeah. I mean, and I guess in a way that they, they tried to say that she did it, some of it herself, but it wasn't all just herself. Like, you know, the Joker kissed her. So, yeah, she already gets some of it already. She That's when they tear apart Arkham, they run away, they do all sorts of things. We'll have to see what happens because um, uh, Amanda Connor's going to do that new standalone series for Harley Quinn. So we'll have to see if she, you know, goes back to the old origin story or the old personality mm -hmm. um, or if she keeps um, in this storyline where she's, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. where she's this way. And she, maybe it's Amanda Connor's with drawings, but she looks a lot more cute in yeah. the upcoming series that she's going to be doing. Yeah. Unless Suicide Squad-ish. Yeah. So, which, it sounds like the Suicide Squad has been disbanded, mm -hmm. so maybe she'll just be doing her own thing, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that Arkham City from um, the video game, perfect in between. You know, it's got the cutesy Harley, it's also got the sinister Harley mm -hmm. melded into one. Um, and I think these are just the two, like the cutesy Harley and the, the Suicide Squad Harley are just on way two different extremes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they need to find a happy medium, and I think if they declare this as a phase, but I don't think they're going to do that. No. Which is unfortunate. 
in my opinion. Yeah. She also brings up, her issue brings up the fact that there's a lot of people who, mainly the villains, who are just these super geniuses and they get bored. And they end up going crazy, I guess. Because, like, what, she's 23 and she's already a doctor? She's working at Arkham City as one of their head psychologists? Like, how does that work out? I mean, if people start going to college when they were in high school? I don't understand. Age is a weird issue for DC mm-hmm. Comics that they still haven't been able to tease out. And I think they just shouldn't touch it at all and let readers decide what age they want these mm-hmm. people to be. Yeah. I really like this. It was awesome. Um, I loved how... Um, the art inside is more kind of old timey. Mm-hmm. Um, the the coloring looks a little darker, um, so it's really cool because it's all like flashbacks, like some to the eighteen hundreds, um, you know, nineteen fourteen. So like really old stuff. So it's like this is what used to be going on in the Quarter Isles, and it's just showing, you know, what the first Talon was like. And in the end, they decided to bring the first Talon back, which is bad news bears for everybody. <laughs> I really liked how now that the crime syndicate has taken over and there's no more villains, they're like, we need to reclaim Gotham again. Mm-hmm. Like, they're coming out of coming back. hiding, essentially, yeah. again, which is really cool. And it sounds like they're having a civil war between the owls. Not all of them want whatever mm-hmm. they want to release. release. Yeah. They want to go back and release the first Talon to wreak havoc. the first Talon just randomly just started killing people. They yeah. let him out, and he's like, I'm killing yeah. everyone. And they're like, whoa, you can only kill, like, who we tell you to? And then he's, like, killing Court of Owls And then he's like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not listening to you. So really? he's kind of, yeah. he's pretty sweet. I'm really excited Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They're going to pull him out of the fridge and see what he does. <laughs> he's, like, literally in this giant sarcophagus thing. I just need a whole series on it. Yeah. Uh, I'm Just the flashbacks that they had with the different parts of Gotham, I needed more. And they have Talon, but Talon focuses on a modern day, mm-hmm. yeah. um... Talon that's going rogue, right. which is cool, um, but seeing the backdrop of the old school Court of Owls in yeah. old school Gotham would be mm-hmm. amazing. Really cool. They really have like a treasure chest right here. They can mm-hmm. just pull stories out from anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. This, so. this is the best new villain that I've, I've seen in forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So hopefully they'll keep on going with this in the Talon series and keep on, you know, drawing from old stuff or, mm-hmm. you know, even make a new, a totally new series yeah. with just focusing on Court of Owls. And what's super cool is they even point out, like, whenever um, the Court of Owls gets too much press, they actually just go into hiding for years. Mm -hmm. Years and years. So, literally, if they get tired of doing this, they can put it aside for a little bit. And then later on, they can pull them (laughs) back out again, and they can have something completely different. They just... I think they hit gold on this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that was a really good one. It's great. Out of all these, um, I would recommend Court of Owls the most. Great. Mm -hmm. Um... Also, Black Manta. Court of Owls and Black Manta were definitely winners for mm-hmm. me, too. <laughs> for sure. I don't know. I just like these so much better than last week's. So. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The second week is, is second much week better. The second week is much better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So go to our blog. Check it out. See what's coming out each week. Plan ahead. Which ones you want to get. Which ones you want to get lenticular. Um, and, and definitely check it out that way. Mm-hmm. Those were the issues that we got. Um, what are the must-haves for you? Uh, Court of Owls and Black Manta, for sure. What about you? Corral's back by now? Yep. Mine would be uh, Court of Owls. Um, and the Riddler. I like the Riddler. You like the Riddler? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would say Court of Owls, and I really like Trigon. Yeah, Trigon mm-hmm. is cool too. Just yeah. get them all. The, this week was great. It, this saves, week, yeah. it saves time. Versus week one where we're like, meh, yeah, meh. Yeah. This one um, they did a great job this week. Even, even the Earth 2 ones were, you know, they weren't horrible. <laughs> yeah, they weren't horrible. Um, it wasn't what you expected. Expected, but at the same time, it's not in the same DC universe. It's mm-hmm. in, it's in their little fantasy. It's the writer's fantasy playtime. Let's call it Earth Two. It's a different dimension, but basically, they have the they have the luxury of doing whatever they want. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys for tuning in, um, seeing all the little reviews of all the week two that came out. Um, and if you guys have any questions or comments or you know your experiences with Villains Month, let us know. Post uh, comments. Uh, just if you just want to talk to us. Yeah, cool send us an email too. Email. Yeah, we've got our um, email listed on our blog. Um, there's even a box in the corner where you can just directly type in a message to us um, and share your, what you think about these different issues. Um, and you know, if you agreed or disagree with certain things, post on our videos as well. Um, we love opinions. We love mm-hmm. opinions. We love discussions. Um, we want to talk to you know more people about um, comics and what's going on in the comic book world. And so thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope you guys subscribe. Subscribe. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> awesome. I don't know.
don't know, guys. I just really love these.